Hello friends and Ray Bohax here. Welcome to the Engine Man segment of the Successful Farming TV show. You know, they call me the Engine Man, but in practical terms, if you make it go, you have to make it stop. So what today's segment is gonna be about brakes and the master cylinder on a hydraulic system. And it makes no difference whether this is on a tractor, whether it's on a car, pickup truck, any hydraulic braking system using a master cylinder. And there's a couple of things I wanna go over. They're, they're little points, but they're really imperative for you to understand them to properly service a master cylinder. The first thing I wanna discuss is that before you take the lid off of any hydraulic system, master cylinder, clutch cylinder, you need to clean that. You don't want the dirt and the dust to get into the fluid because that is an abrasive and it is going to end up wearing out the whole braking system. So the first procedure is to clean that. Then we will take the lid off the reservoir and you may have wondered why on many systems there's a larger and a smaller reservoir. If the system has front disc brakes, the larger reservoir is always for the disc brakes because the fluid level is actually the adjustment for the pads. As the pad starts to wear, the fluid level drops. The smaller reservoir is for the drum brake set of part of the system. Now, a very common problem would be that you had a brake system failure, let's say a wheel cylinder went bad or you changed the caliper on it for whatever reason, and after you bled the brakes, shortly thereafter the master cylinder failed. Well, that is your fault, not the master cylinder's fault. Because what happens is inside the master cylinder there is a piston, and this piston goes back and forth when you step on the brake pedal and creates the hydraulic pressure to operate the brakes. When you are bleeding the brakes, it is imperative that you either put a piece of wood underneath the brake pedal or put your other shoe so you limit the travel of the piston in the bore. What happens is if you do not do that, the piston goes outside of the bore, the cup, and then when you release it, the spring pulls it back and you tear the cup. If you ever had a carburetor part, that cup looks almost like an accelerator pump on an old carburetor and you end up, by having the pedal travel too far, you end up tearing the cup on the master cylinder and shortly thereafter it fails. You tend to think that it just failed because the other component failed, but you actually failed, ruined it while you were bleeding it. The best way to bleed a master cylinder, a new master cylinder, is to use a, a, a dedicated bleeding tool. You could ble bench bleed this with this tool, you, it goes into the port, it goes into the fluid, and then you could use a dowel in a vise and pump the piston back and forth, limiting the travel and getting all the air out of the system. Another way to bleed an entire system very efficiently without damaging the master cylinder is to use a one-man bleeder. And keep in mind that brake fluid is hygroscopic. It wicks in fluid. So whenever you buy a can of brake fluid and you open it up, put your date on it that you opened it up. If it's more than six or seven months old, get rid of it. I'm over in Columbia and Ohio at the Firestone Test Center. You have a blessed day and make sure you take good care of that master cylinder. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video and click here to see more great videos.